If someone, if, if a young person is setting up a, a theater like you were setting up in Calgary, whatever, and they have to find themselves a board, what do you say to them about the people they should have on their board? Firstly, you must find somebody from the communications uh, business. You can, you'll do better if you can find people who are in TV or radio who know something about connecting with an audience or something from companies which uh, sell time. What I mean by that is <clears throat> uh, an airline is very good because if a seat isn't occupied between Toronto and Vancouver, it can't be resold next week as you can do at Sears or something like that. So people who understand time, uh, selling time, are very useful on a board because people who are used to commodities or are into some other area, like lawyers, are not so useful. Oh my God, I hadn't mm. thought of it like that. Mm. You have to have somebody who understands what you're doing. Because in the so theater, if you have a bunch of folks who are in the commodities businesses, they don't well, get they're, it. they're not into time. Yeah. Yeah, their stuff lasts forever, and you're just a matter of getting it out of the ground or yeah. doing what you do. But people who understand the idea of selling time are very useful. And political connections, is that important on a board? Yes, very. That's why I read the Calgary Herald. Right. I knew exactly who to go to. So you to get a councillor on your board, or do you get... Well, no, we don't think we ever did, but you have to know the mayor, and you have to know people, and you have to, you know, bring them in and show them that you're relevant to what they're doing, and that they've got a... There's an audience coming to this theatre, uh, and so that audience also has votes, and it's interested. It's not just a little elitist group. You have to prove that. I'm constantly proving that. Look at... Look at the destruction of the National Portrait Gallery by these idiots in Ottawa. Uh, I mean, they, didn't, they made a mistake, and they're beginning to realize they made a terrible mistake now. But um, that's their first thought, because there are still a lot of Philistines. And it seems now that one of the primary functions of any board is to raise money. Yes. How is that, how is that to deal with? <sighs> if they know what they're raising the money for, they can get out, they, they will do it. And some people can't raise money and don't like doing it, but uh, if, if there's a vision and there's something exciting that you're on, on top of, uh, then you can, you can make your board excited by it. But they have to have connections. They have to know where they can go to raise money. It, they, unfortunately, I mean, it's, a, it's usually a limited pool, and what you want is people who can get out into, outside of that pool. Mm -hmm. and say this is important. But constantly you have to say what we do is important to the society and why is it important. You have to keep reminding everybody why it's important. The mirror, holding the mirror up to nat nature. It's much easier nowadays. You've got a Richard Florida over here at the, mm -hmm. you know, at uh, Rotman School, isn't he? Uh, saying that what you need in a society is all these, uh, this creativity, to, to release creativity, you have to start with creativity, mm -hmm. it's the beginning of the thing. And the creativity comes in the form of, of people with ideas. And these people with ideas, at least in the past, used to gravitate towards the arts. Now at the Shaw Festival you had a confrontation with your board, I believe. Yes. When does an artistic director or the artistic team, when do they choose to, when is it wise to confront or play a an end game with a board? Well, my confrontation with the board at the, at the Shaw Festival was such a weird thing. Um, what had really happened was that a group of people on the board had not liked the way that I was moving the company in the very early 80s. Um, and Unfortunately for them, they'd not really brought it to the board as a, as a full board. What happened to me was that before a budget meeting of the board, I was taken aside by the chairman and informed that they weren't going to renew my contract after the year that we were just going into. Um, and I said, well, what do you mean by that? Are you firing me? And then, yes, that's what they were doing. But I realized that the whole board didn't know this, that the executive had made this decision. So I went around to the rest of the board and said, look, this has happened. The executive made the decision that they're not picking up my contract, but they're not understanding what we're doing. 
look, we're doing this, 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 and this. And I persuaded the rest of the board to defeat the executive. So, and you did that at that meeting, or no. it took a oh, no, no, weeks, it, months? It took a month at least right. to realize that I was fighting back. Well, that's, that can be very difficult for a board if the artistic director has power and can fight back, and I had power. And the power was bringing one by one the board members into seeing what you were trying to do. Yeah. Yes, because they hadn't understood. And partially my fault. I hadn't laid it out clear and clearly enough. There was so much to do in the early days that I was at the shore. So many things to do to fix that I really didn't pay much attention to the board, unfortunately. I should have. So are you saying then the only real power an artistic director has with a board is vision? Yes. Yes. Clear articulation of a vision. And that's, that's, that's an immense power. And it has to be a, a vision, which is also at least the board can see that there is success in the offing. Right. It, it can't be a vision which slowly right. the, the audience is disintegrating. Right. It, uh, it has to be in the offing. They, they must sense that something good is happening here. Have the, have the it's sort of <laughs> folklore. I, have the nature of boards changed through the 80s when Canada Council cut for cut back its funding or theaters were not being able to be funded on that level by the Canada Council? Did the nature of boards change in the country? Yes, because the boards had to raise more money. Uh, it, it, and that's why development directors are so very highly paid. They have to help the board to raise the money. How you go in and ask for for money for things. Is this working or is this something we should endeavor to change? I think it's working. I don't, I don't, society itself has enough money within the society. There's a lot of money sloshing around and people can afford to give money to good projects. Um, I would like a bit more from the government. It would be helpful, but fighting you know, fighting for money, fighting for an audience. It never hurt anybody if you've got a really good idea. It doesn't hurt you. It really doesn't. Um, I mean, we got a bit burned with Shakespeare works because we couldn't, oh, couldn't quite get it all, mm -hmm. all the ducks in a row somehow there. Uh, we were quite close, I think, a couple of times, but we couldn't quite get it together. But usually you can can. Um, it does depend on, on good managerial skills. A, a, general, a good general manager is, is very, very necessary. It really is. Um, I was, generally speaking, quite lucky in who I ended up with as general manager of the companies that I ran. I, uh, I had some very interesting people. Not the usual people, oddly enough. They came from different sources. Um, is the artistic director consulted by the board on the various candidates for general manager, or you accept whoever turns up in the desk? No, it, it can go either way. I had uh, the one concession I made to the board when they tried to fire me at the Shaw Festival was that they, I'd been appointing general managers. I was in charge uh, when I first went in there. But the one concession I made to them, because it was a bit of a fight, was that they could have a say in the appointment of the general manager. They could choose him, but I would have a veto. Right. Uh, right. I don't know who that was. And luckily, they chose <coughs> the person who I wanted anyway. In right. There. Um, it, it, it's a matter, hmm, it can be very tricky, the relationship and what you do, but it really does depend on knowing your business and having an idea. And the relationship between the general manager and the artistic director, it is up to the artistic director to again imbue the general manager with the vision and this is what we're doing? Well, the general manager wouldn't take the job unless they bought into it. Quite frankly, they'd be a fool if they didn't. They'd have to find out what the, the, what the artistic director was trying to do with the company and what, the, what they thought of it. And if they bought into it, well, fine, okay, that was, that was fine. I did have fights with a couple of general managers, but, uh, well... I, you know, I won. <laughs> well, because How? I, well, because I was very firm in what I wanted. Right. I, I knew that, and I was practical. 
I, I, I knew that these things could be. I, I, I could read a balance sheet just in a simple way. I knew what I knew how to read it. I, I was interested in marketing. I wanted to play the shows that I put on. I wanted it to play to thousands of people because I thought it was great what I was making. I, I, I was devastated if people didn't show up. So I was interested in marketing. How do I get this out to the population that these things are interesting? And you must be interested, I think, an artistic director's got to be interested in these things. And that's up to the board to find the artistic director who is interested in this and filling the seats. And not just by putting on rubbish, you know, you know but by doing good things.